When it comes to selecting human hair in Photoshop, all we do is with the quick selection tool selected, we click on the select subject button. Not only does it do a fantastic job of selecting the subject, but also the hair. Have a look. If you click on the mask button, look at it. It's gorgeous. However, when it comes to animals and fur, and if you try to do the same thing, and if you try to convert it into a mask, take a look at it. It's bad. It's really, really bad. So how do we fix it? Apparently, there's a secret button in Photoshop, not so secret, but you can use that to do fantastic first selections and that too, automatically. We're going to talk about that. Besides, we'll also talk about how you can make the mask even better. On top of that, we'll learn how we can use blend modes to refine the mask to perfection. And at the end, as a bonus, we'll learn how to fix a very crucial problem. Have you ever noticed that whenever you cut something out from a dark background and you try to put it on a brighter background, the edges, the hair and the fur just look crazy. Also, also similarly, when you cut something from a bright background and you try to put it on a dark background, the same problems appear. We'll learn how to easily fix that with Photoshop. There's so many fun stuff stuffed in this video. So without any further ado, I'm excited to share with you. Let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you my friend already know what to do. Check the links in the description. So first of all, let's create a background for this cat. So for now, we're going to create a black background because with brighter backgrounds, the edges go crazy. We'll learn how to fix it later. Don't worry about it right now. For simplicity, let's choose a black background. All right, let's unlock the background layer and put the background, the solid color background under our subject. Let's name this layer cat, kitty, whatever you want to name it. Keep things organized and then instead of clicking on select subject, click on select and mask. Let's do everything inside it. Why? I'll tell you why. You get access to all of the controls that you need plus the secret button right here. It's not actually a secret. First of all, click on select subject to make the selection of our subject, which is the kitty right there. And then to select the hair or the fur better, just simply click on this button and that is refine hair. And as soon as you do that, take a look at the change. So this is the before. And this is the after. All the minute details, all the hair strands just come up, except for some. Now let's learn how to make this even better. Now to take it from great to greater, we need to use this tool in our arsenal called Refine Edge. Some of you might already have guessed it and paint around the edges. If you need to see which areas you need to paint, just decrease the transparency. Right now it is set to onion skin, which means that if the transparency is all the way to the right hand side, only the areas which are selected will show up. And if the transparency is all the way to the left hand side, everything is going to show up. So if you need to see which areas you need to paint, you can decrease the transparency and then paint. Now, if the transparency is all the way to the right hand side, any area that is not selected, in those areas, the layers underneath shows up. Because we have chosen a solid black adjustment layer, that is what shows up right here. So let's decrease the transparency to see which areas we need to paint and simply paint on the messy areas. That's all. Can you see we're making the selection so much better? Let's increase the transparency to notice that. Similarly, let's do it right here as well. Mostly it had already got it right in most of the areas with Refine Hair and with the help of Refine Edge, this is just close to perfection. Once you're happy with the mask, you need to decide what you want to do with it. So scroll down, you want to turn it into a layer mask. So let's click on the drop down and let's choose layer mask and hit OK. And there you go. That's how to do it. Now, as much as it looks good, the mask is not perfect yet, but we can make it perfect with blend modes. Take a look. Have a look at just the mask. To do it, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button. And as you can see, there are some areas which we do need to paint in white. And around the corners, there are these areas where the first selection has creeped in inside and we have a see-through through the ear. What do I mean by that? So right now you cannot see it because we have a black background, but let's change the background to red. Have a look. This shouldn't be see-through. So here's the original image. It should be opaque, right? So we need to improve all of that and more. And we can do it with a very natural fashion with blend modes. Let's change it back to black and hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the mask button. Take the brush, white as the foreground color. And first of all, with the normal blend mode, just fill in on the inside and on the areas which are obviously opaque. Now, around the edge, this is the most important part. If we try to paint directly right here, we might leak the paint slightly outside. These edges are very, very crucial. Have a look. Similarly, these areas are supposed to be opaque, but if I try to fill it just directly, take a look. We are painting a little bit on the outside and it's just taking away from the beautiful mask that we just created. So how do you deal with that? Well, simply change the blend mode from normal to Overlay. When you have overlay selected and white color on the brush, it will not paint on the black areas no matter how much you try. 
it will only paint on the areas which are closer to white and in proportion to that. So if it's less closer to white, if it's a dark gray color, it will paint less there. If it's a light gray color, it will paint more there. Make sense? Similarly, if you have black selected, and if you have set the brush to overlay blend mode, just the opposite will happen. It will just not paint in the white areas, but will paint on areas which are closer to black in proportion to that. So if it's very, very dark, like this particular area, it will paint there more. But if it's not that dark, it will paint there less. That's how overlay in masking works. For this example, we just need to set it to white. If you want, you can always decrease the opacity as well. So I'm going to keep it at about 20%. This prevents us from accidentally painting outside the subject in the black areas. So let's fill up these. See, the paint is not leaking, no matter how hard I try to paint outside. In fact, it's also bringing back some of the strands of fur. Take a look at the mask, my friend. It is just so perfect. Let's show the subject by holding the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask back again. Wonderful, isn't it? Now, if we did change the background to a darker color, it wouldn't be a problem. As you can see, we have changed the background to black and it's all right because the original image was taken in a dark background. However, if we change the background to anything bright, the edges will go crazy. Take a look. If we change it to something like light green, something like this, take a look at the edges. It is just trash. The reason this doesn't look right is because the hair or fur is so thin that it takes the color of the background. So let's say your subject was captured in a dark background, so the hair or fur around the edge takes the dark background color in it. So now when you place it on a brighter background, see, the fur is still <laughs> dark. So in short, we have to transform the edge fur in such a way that it takes in the color of the bright background. And what is the blend mode which brightens stuff in a smooth gradient? screen, right? So simply select the kitty layer and change the blend mode to screen. Just have a look at the edge. Look how nicer and natural it looks. I know the subject doesn't look natural, but just focus on the edge. Now the intensity isn't enough for the edge. So we're going to make a couple copies. So let's make a duplicate by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Now take a look. It's way more well defined. Take a look around here as well. We can see all of these strands. Let's make one more copy for more intensity. Control or Command J again. Now I know the middle part looks just not right. So we're going to make one more copy and turn it back to normal. This is for the middle part. And we only want to keep it in the middle. So there are two ways. Number one way is either disturb this mask, which I don't want to do in case I need it later. Number two way is you place this layer in a group. Just this one layer. Press Control or Command G. And now this group can have an additional mask. So click on the mask button right here. Now you have two masks for the same layer. And let's name this group normal because it's the normal blend mode. Now select the mask, take the brush, take a soft round brush, black as the foreground color and just paint around the edges. Take it away from the edges. You can decrease the flow if you want to. And right now, no matter what we do, it is just not painting. You know why? Because the blend mode is set to overlay. And when you have the overlay blend mode and black as the color, you know good and hell well that it won't paint on white areas. So change it back to normal. Every time, please remember to do it after you have done working with masks and brushes and blend modes because it has been known to make people crazy. So simply start painting. Take a look at it, my friend. How perfect this looks. Every edge, every strand just shows up so nicely. And it also gets brighter according to the background and it just fits in perfectly. So here's before repairing the edges and here is the after. Take a look at the difference. And you can change colors, create a vignette, use different backgrounds. That's up to you. But this is the technique. When you have an image captured in a dark background and you want to put it on a brighter background and the fur is bright. Now, some of you might ask, Unmesh, what do I do if I have a subject captured on a bright background and you want to put the subject on a darker background? Well, in that case, just simply use the multiply blend mode in the exact same way. Confusing? Well, we already have a video about it. So you can go ahead and watch this video after watching this one. So that's how to select fur in Photoshop. Remember to use the refine hair button. Along with that, please use the refine edge brush tool for maximum accuracy. On top of that, do not forget to use blend modes to make the mask even better with perfection. Sometimes what happens is some areas around the corners might be left out. So you might want to change the blend mode of the brush to overlay. And with white or black, 
just paint with a slightly lower flow according to your taste. And after that, if you have a subject captured in a super dark or super bright background and you put it in a background which is completely opposite to that, you can use blend mode techniques like this to make the edges better. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?